This is the last video Dr. Hamza Ansari saw of his daughter Mia before he fell ill with coronavirus. I was struggling to breathe. Um, for me, it was like breathing through a straw. And every time I, and my chest was, my lungs were so inflamed. Uh, whenever I tried to take a deep breath, I'd just cough uncontrollably to the point where I'd become so exhausted. Those were my darkest moments. And I would think to myself, the story of my life, it can't end like this. Uh, you know, dying by myself, alone in a hospital, with my family half a world apart. Hamza's wife Michelle is in Canada with their daughter after getting stuck there while visiting family. Being so far away, Michelle said she felt helpless and feared the worst. For a good couple of days, he wasn't necessarily making sense in any of his texts. Um, but he, he just, I remember him, um, all he asked me for was to see Mia, our daughter. Um, and I remember him saying, I need strength to fight. So I remember all I did during that time was take pictures of my daughter, um, take videos of her, and just, I, I sent it to him and I said, you know, you need to fight for her. While Hamza has been apart from his family, he's missed Mia's first birthday, her first steps, his wedding anniversary, father's and Mother's Day. When I see Mia, it's, it really breaks my heart because my wife said when she wakes up in the morning, she asks for me. My wife shows her a picture and then she takes the phone, kisses it, gives it a hug. And it's been very difficult, this whole pandemic, uh, trying to, you know, survive on virtual hugs and virtual kisses. Hamza was being treated by his own colleagues at the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital. After nine days and a negative test, he was discharged. But instead of going home to an empty flat, his colleague, Colonel Carl Meyer, invited him to stay at his home. Somebody living by themselves in the UK, wife and child away in another country, no, no real family here at all, that there was no other option. It was the right thing to do. At first I was a bit uh, anxious and a bit hesitant. I mean, my relationship with him was purely uh, uh, professional. But now that I'm in this situation, he's inviting me over, I thought, and I spoke to my wife and she's like, yeah, just, you know, take him up on his offer. Uh, nothing can, nothing bad could come out of this, but you'll just uh, strengthen your bond and relationship with Colonel Meyer and the rest of the team. So I took him up on his offer and it was actually one of the best things that I could have done at that time. We have become good friends and, and that, will, that will never change. That will continue forever. Hamza is now back at work. He says the hardships he and his colleagues have gone through have strengthened their bond and brought them closer together. We started off as colleagues running the trauma service here at the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital. But uh, over the past four months through this pandemic, we actually became more of a family. No matter how stressful the situation got, no matter how overwhelming the odds were, and no matter how injured we were, we always came back the next day asking for more with a smile on our face. And there are more smiles to come as Hamza prepares to reunite with his family in a few days' time. Aaron Lal, ITV News. Goals, a pitch, stands, boots and a ball are just some of the things that are needed to make a football club. And that's what happened in 2007 when Solihull Borough and Moore Green merged to create Solihull Moors. The club now has thousands of fans, and one of those includes former Birmingham City and England international, Karen Carney. The former winger headed back to where it all began for her, as the club hosted an employment and life skills session for local students from Hazel Oak School. Karen began her playing career at Damson Park, the former home of Birmingham City women, and went on to become a legend in the game. It's got a lot of warm feeling and memories here for me, the, the pitch in particular and playing on it and kind of having my family here and yeah, I've got a big association to the football club. It does so much more than just for the first team, it does stuff for the women's teams, for all the other teams, the community, the foundation that everyone's associated with the football club so it has such a wider effect and it's really important and for someone that's from the area I know that it, it's so key because I know so many people and like I said, a football club is the heart of a community and it brings everyone together. Solihull Moors currently sit fifth, a playoff position in the National League. It gives the club a chance of promotion to the Football League, which would be a first in their history. But just two years ago, things looked a lot less bright as the pandemic brought non-league football 
to a halt. Covid cost the club £1 million more than normal. To combat this, the National Lottery stepped in and offered funding for all teams in the National League. At that time, the club was probably, or most clubs were facing uh, a perilous financial period simply because there, was no, there were no gates, there were no people come to ground, but you've still got the players' wages, so you've got all the costs but none of the revenue. You know, football at this level is a labour of love and it's not, it's not a financial investment, it's more about uh, hoping to, to realise the dream of achieving league football. And that may be on the card for Solihull Moors. They've won their last three, but their chair is being optimistically cautious. If we get into the playoffs this season, that'll, that'll be a, a result and a half, and that, that, that's our probably first ambition. If we, if we then get the sort of prize of promotion, that would be just an added bonus. Uh, but I dare not think too far ahead on that one. If Solihull Moors beat Maidenhead United tomorrow, they'll increase their chances of bringing league football to Damson Park. Robbers have smashed their way into a jewellery shop in the Sparkbrook area of Birmingham. Dramatic footage captured by onlookers shows a truck being smashed into the shop while the gang threatens people to stop them intervening. For more on this, we can cross to Aaron Lal, who's in our newsroom. Aaron. Well, this happened at around midday this afternoon on Ladypool Road in the Sparkbrook area of Birmingham. People were going about their normal business when they, when they became aware of something that was happening outside of a jewellery shop. The whole robbery was captured by people on their mobile phones and here is just some of that footage. Well, as you can imagine, these were incredibly frightening scenes for people who were going out about their shopping. And as you can see from the footage, one of the robbers who was carrying an axe was threatening anyone who thought to even try to stop them. While this was happening, you can hear people taking down the number plate of the vehicle and asking if the police had been called. From this angle, you can see that there were at least three robbers involved in the raid. It's not known what was taken in the attack, but the, but the attack has caused significant damage to the jewellery shop. Other mobile phone footage of the incident shows empty trays in the shop. We have contacted West Midlands Police who are yet to respond to our request for an update, but we will bring you any updates on this as soon as we can. Aaron, thank you for that.